The question here, can you add more free motion quilting onto a quilt that's been quilted already, bound, washed, and dried? And the answer is... Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back. The answer to that question is absolutely yes. And I should know because that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Enough talking already. Let's get busy trimming this quilt up binding it, washing and drying it, and quilting on top of it. Stay to the end. I will share with you what I named this quilt. The name of it actually came from one of you. I have all of the saran wrap all around the entire quilt edge now. So no flurries in the sewing room today, friends. I'm going to line up around the corner of the quilt as well as find some lines in here to follow. Once I have the established square around each corner, then I'm gonna go in with my large 24 inch by eight and a half inch ruler. It's just a nice big ruler. It covers a lot of ground when you're trying to trim up a quilt. From the cut that I made initially from that corner, I'm going to line it up along here and check all of my lines along the inside, outside, everywhere. When I get to the corner, I then will line up along the farthest edge this way and along the farthest edge up this way, and I will cut all of that out that's peeking out. I decided against the pink polka dot. It was a little too dark for what I really wanted. I ditched this idea. When I squared up my quilt and trimmed the sides, I had a lot of this left over with the press and seal already on it. I ended up cutting one and three quarter strips of the minky. Decided to use this as the binding. It's so soft and I know I'm going to be using this quilt a lot. I just thought the edges would be much nicer to cuddle with rather than that stiff cotton. I only used the minky that was cut with the grain. Why is that important? Well, if I was to cut it across the grain, then it would have more stretch in it, and I didn't want that. When I cut with the grain, it barely had any stretch at all. And I know that it's not gonna get wonky as a binding on my quilt. I'm sewing a little bit more than a quarter inch, but not quite a half an inch. So I wanted a bit of a thicker look to the front of it. When I wrap that binding around, I'm going to leave the raw edge because once Minky's cut, it doesn't fray. I have a magnetic gauge somewhere that I can't find anywhere. I don't know what I did with it. I piled up some posty notes here so that I would have the correct seam allowance that I wanted for this quilt. It's safe to say that I can take the rest of this off now that it's cut because it's not going to stretch because remember we cut it on the grain so we're good there. I just sewed these with a straight seam. I just went along with the color right there where it matched up. So here I'm just lining everything up and I'm making sure that that is right up against the edge of that posty note. I felt like I would have more control being one piece right here and all going in the same direction as far as with the grain rather than trying to flip these over and sew it to the front and possibly get things wrinkled in there and pleated, so I felt like that was my best bet with this. Honestly, you could take any minky at all and put it on any cotton quilt that you want, making those edges nice and soft. Perfect little miter. In my original design, I only wanted to put free motion quilting in every other block, so to speak there was going to be like dead space in the back and I was okay with that until I started taking pictures and video of it after I thought I was done. I went ahead and washed it and dried it with every other being free motion quilted on the back. Can I just tell you that I didn't like it. <laughs> after looking at it I was like oh my word this quilt needs more. <laughs> Possibly some of those cabbage roses could make their way into every other block. And so that's what I did. 
I went ahead and free motion quilted the rest after it was already washed and dried and it came out perfect. Here is some footage of me free motion quilting those cabbage roses on the dead space on my quilt. I had literally no issues at all with any type of pulling of fabric one way or another after I've washed it and dried it. I was thinking there could be an issue, but honestly, there are zero issues. In one of the previous videos, if you recall, I used Wonder Under and fused that to my flannel batting that I used and then pin basted it to my quilt top. And I will tell you, I had zero issues with any stretching of any minky. It worked out so well that I would definitely use Wonder Under again to fuse to my flannel and then fuse that to my minky to make sure that there's no stretching involved. quilt last night and I can assure you it is the nuggiest quilt I've ever cuddled with. No one tell my four kids about this quilt right here because they'll want it for sure and especially that Josephine of mine, my granddaughter, she'll want this one for sure. <laughs> Look at your screen right now. I've put the playlist to this quilt right here. Go ahead and click on it so you can learn all the tips and tricks that you may have missed the first time around. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.